we are just turning this year 2016 and entering into a new year, a new season, a new uh, chapter in the story of our life. And as we finish this uh, year, I think it's time for us to evaluate ourselves, to check ourselves, to estimate what our uh, blessings, our challenges, our uh, fails were in this year 2016. Uh, as I continue with this series of the Sermon on the Mountain, we are finished right now. Uh, not right now, I mean today and next week, this chapter 7, and concluding this series of the Sermon on the Mount. And I want to encourage you this morning to continue in the way, to pursue the way that God already started for you this year, 2016, to let his kingdom come and continue in the next year with this uh, heart to to live for the king, to be a member of his kingdom, and to fight and be, st stand firm for what challenge or new adventures you're going to have for the next year. So once again, it's a very important season in many people's life because like many companies, like many education centers, schools, it's time to evaluate. And the time to evaluate is actually very short. In companies, they have to quickly uh, sum up every profits or debts that they have before the new year start. They have to come up with new budgets before the new year starts. So everybody's so busy. Counters, counters who, those who work in banks, I, I remember uh, I have family members who work in bank when I was young and they say, don't call us in, during Christmas time or New Year time because they work from, the, from day to night, even weekends, just to be ready for the New Year. A school teachers, the same. It's a time for report cards. And sometimes we have to take this job to home to finish their report card because it's a limited time and the, the school principal say we have to send these report cards at this date of the year so they can have their uh, report cards at home on time. So we are all hurried to evaluate our students as teachers do. People also evaluate uh, their life and we as Christians we have to evaluate our hearts. Now, how can you evaluate yourself? If we want to evaluate ourselves alone, yeah, we can have a perspective of evaluation, but as Christians, we have to evaluate together. As church, we need to have brothers and sisters to evaluate what we have and we call the body of Christ. Is our body healthy? Is our body strong? Is our body weak? Is our community ready for a new year? So it's time for evaluation. How far we have walking with God, how strong we are in faith, how God has blessed us and give us opportunity, how many blessings and opportunities we miss it's time for evaluation. It's time for thinking deeply, not to criticize, like we say, starting this chapter 7, and try to see the stick that is in the eye of our neighbor when we have a big uh, piece of wood in our face. It's time to evaluate with purpose to edify, not to criticize and demolish ministries or demolish peoples or, or lives because we say, hey, look at them. They, they started the years very boldly and now look at how they finish. They finish like those who are in shame. 
If we have that attitude, then we are not like God. We are not resembling the character of our Father in Heaven. We Christians have to evaluate and have discernment for evaluation. Have values, have uh, standards, and if something needs to be uh, corrected, we correct it. But in love, in love with God, in love with brothers and sisters. Now, the Lord Jesus in chapter 7 of Matthew, he helped us to evaluate, giving us illustration. And actually not just one illustration, but many illustrations. So I don't need to bring more illustration for this sermon because we have enough here just in the scripture. And it's interesting that when God wants to estimate something, he don't use big numbers. The Bible doesn't use big numbers for evaluating or for, for estimating things. It's as simple as one and two. You will hear in God's word, he used this phrase, two, or one, and one that form two. Jesus says, if two or three are getting together in my name, then I in the midst of them. He just sent two disciples to knock the doors of the house of Israel to evangelize. He didn't use big numbers to evaluate, to estimate, to, pro to, to have a budget or, 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 or to plan for some project. He used small numbers. And he also used these small, small numbers to evaluate. So he doesn't come, okay, you didn't match 100 points, so you are failing in my, in my test. You are failing in my evaluation. Actually, he's... Rates are very low, just two, one and two. If we want to evaluate our way of testifying to the kingdom of God, in front of God, we don't need to say, okay, God, I just brought 12 disciples to you this year, 2016. God will ask you just a simple, simple question. I say, do you just bring just one soul to me this year? Because that person and you are two. And that, that's necessary for me to be with you. He won't use big numbers to, to estimate. He won't give a, okay, I'm going to grade you with just 100. Remember that the Lord, even he left 99 sheep in this table looking for just one. He estimated one more important than 99. Because that one needed the Lord. In this chapter, we have to learn how to evaluate and how to check our spirituality and our relationship with God. So the Lord started with two gates. Actually, in chapter 6, he also was talking about two. Remember the two treasures, treasures in heaven and treasures in earth. He was talking about two lords, Mammon and God. And now we see he's talking again about two and he comparing these two gates and two ways too. And he says here, enter the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. He just have two groups to evaluate. Those who go to the destruction and those who go to have eternal life. Now, one of these two groups do you belong? Where do you think you are walking through? Or what way are you following? Are you following the narrow path, the narrow way? Or you are just in a comfort way in your life with Christ? Actually, Wordsby says, if you want to evaluate or test your spirituality, uh, he has two questions for us. And he said, first test. Did your profession of faith in Christ cost you anything? Did your profession of faith in Christ cost you anything? Then he gave a second question or our evaluation and test, just using only two, no more questions, only two. 
Did my decision for Christ change my life? Did my decision for Christ change my life this year, 2016? Did my profession of faith in Christ cost me something this year, 2016? Then you have the answers. You know the answers. Just two questions to evaluate, to pass. Are you in the comfort zone? Or are you in this way that we see here, the scripture said, it's, no, it's, it's hard. It's a hard way. It's narrow. We don't take this word literally. It's an illustration about how the life of the kingdom of God is. It's not, it doesn't mean that because we are in the kingdom of God, we're going to have lack of something. Actually, the Lord said in, in Psalm 23 that we have no lacks in Jesus. And he blessed us and he wants us to be rich in heaven and also here in earth. And we start in chapter 6 that, yes, it's okay. We, we, we can have riches in this world, but for his glory, for his kingdom. And God wants to bless us with more and more war so we can use his finances to honor him. And we can bless others with this. So it's not the meaning of this war that we're going to live in poverty in order to get to heaven. But there were many misinterpretations and many preachers in history that they use and they manipulate this Bible verse to say, yes, you shouldn't be a, a wealthy person or a rich person you should live in poverty because that's resemble humbleness but it's not the outside for that God is looking in us it's the inside the way how you live inside that is more important to God than the way you live outside you can be rich outside but poor in the spirit that's more important to God are you poor in the spirit so remember this chapter saying is the, the review and the summary of the whole Sermon of the Mount. And God is leading us, leading us back to the Beatitudes. We have two gates that are open for us. If we believe in Jesus and we accept Jesus, these doors will be open for our spiritual journey. The Bible said that Jesus is the gate. And also the Bible said that Jesus is the way. Believing in Jesus opens the door of heaven for you. But after you believe in Jesus, you have to walk with Jesus, walking in his ways. He said, I am, many times in the book of John. And he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one's come to the Father through me. In other words, no one can enter to the kingdom of heaven without me. I am the gate. But I am also the way. Did you enter in a relationship with Jesus this year, 2016? If you say, yes, I haven't known this year, but before this year started, God bless you. But my second question is, are you walking in this relationship this year 2016? And in your walking with God in this year 2016, are you more, are you more close to the kingdom of heaven than the last year? It's time to evaluate. Now the Lord Jesus is using again, combining chapter 6 and chapter 7, two kind of animals to compare. He talked first, about pigs and now he talked about walls and he said beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing but in worldly they are ravenous wolves you will know them by their fruits do men gather grapes from storm bushes and figs from titus he used also comparison of fruits but let's focus about these pigs he talked in this chapter and wolves that he told in this chapter 7 what are the pigs and what are the wolves he said don't give you pears to the pigs and he also used the dogs so he used two animals pigs and dogs now he's using wolves and sheep but we have to understand who are these pigs he referred to pigs to no believers actually the the, the Jews people they call pigs to the Gentiles and who are these walls? 
These words are not the Gentiles. These words are the Jews, people, the Pharisees, those who were false teachers, who tried to be a sheep, pretend to be a sheep. And Jesus condemned these people and said, you hypocrites, are you following God hypocritely? Or you are a real follower of Jesus as his good shepherd for you? Jesus says, yes, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they know me. So what are you going to evaluate this year? Are you the sheep of Jesus? Are you listening to God's voice as your shepherd? How many times do you meditate in the Bible? How many times do you dedicate to pray in contemplation of this, this scripture to inspire you, to lead your way every day? In other words, are you reading the Bible and praying? This year, 2016, more than the year 2015. What is your progress in your pilgrim here in earth? It's time to evaluate. Then the Lord, once again, summarizing what he said in chapter 7, he said, we have two lords. We have two lords, or we are trying to serve in two lords. And it's, it's interesting that it says here, No, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does not do the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawliness. What kind of law are you talking about? The love of Moses? The love of the Pharisees? The tradition? Remember that Jesus, he likes number two. He knows that number ten is too much to evaluate for you. So he just asks you two questions. Do you love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind? And just neighbors as yourself. Just two. Only two. Two things he's asking you to evaluate. How is your relationship with God and how is your relationship with your neighbors? How much you love God and how much you love your neighbors? Don't tell me that you say to me, Lord, Lord, I do these things for your kingdom and you hate your brother. Doesn't much. If we see the scripture in, in, in the letters of John, he said, how can you love God that you don't see when you don't love your brother that you can see? How do you evaluate your relationship with God when you don't forgive your brothers? When you don't forgive your other people's offenses? When you keep resentments and you are ending this year 2016 with an unforgiving heart? Going back to the Beatitudes, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. But many people say, But Lord, in your name we, we come to Sunday. We, in your name we offer and we, name, we do performance. We, we are preparing for Christmas Eve. We are doing many things. We are so busy. Yeah, I don't know you. You don't know my laws. My laws are simple. Love God, love your neighbor. Don't dedicate and spend your time for performance that I don't need it. I just need your love and I know how you love me when you love your neighbor. A simple law. And those who doesn't follow this law, they are lawless. Lawless. It's time to evaluate. Then the Lord keep us with his evaluation comparing two trees. And it says, even so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So he's comparing now two trees, two kinds of trees. The tree who good, do good fruits or bear good fruits, and the tree who bear bad fruits. And you cannot mix them. You cannot be confused about. You cannot... Try to excuse one from the other one. Oh, 
Lord, I, I'm good, but you know that the circumstances that, that, that brought it to my life this year made me ending in this bad way. Or the circumstances were bad, so now boldly I come to you and say, yes, look at me, Lord. I deserve your blessing for the next year. We have to be ready to understand that God doesn't look again external things. It's not about the fruit, even though he's using this, this metaphor to say, okay, grapes. And he compared grapes, fruits, with the fruits, uh, with the thistles and thorn bushes. They, he compared the, the figs and the grapes as fruits for spirituality. Why the, 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 the figs and why the grapes? Because Israel knows that these kind of fruits represent the kingdom of God. Jesus said that the figs is a, a fruit that he wanted to eat. But one day he came near to Jerusalem and he couldn't find this fruit from the tree and he cursed the tree. It means the fruits of repentance that should this city of Jerusalem have when Jesus came, he couldn't find this fruit of repentance. He couldn't eat this fruit of repentance. The fig tree represents the people of Israel. He couldn't, he couldn't find the fruit of forgiveness because these Jews, these Pharisees, they couldn't forgive each other. They couldn't find respect for parents because even they say, if you offer to the temple what it belongs to your parents, that's okay. Jesus couldn't see these fruits when he came to the world. But the, the grapes, the grapes represent the covenant that God has with us. And Jesus, in the last dinner, he presented the fruit of the grapes. It's, and he said, this is my blood of the covenant. Now, these grapes are simply the fruit of a tree, the tree who have roots. He says in the Gospel of John that Jesus is the wine and we are the branches. Now, what we see most of the time are the grapes. But we don't see the roots in any tree. What God is interested in is not much in the external fruit rather than the roots that we are developing in our heart, in our spirituality. But we cannot do this by ourselves. We need God. Jesus said that every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. What kind of fruits you have this year, 2016, to present to the Lord at the end of the year? What fruits you will say, Lord, okay, this is my fruit or my relationship with you as I walk with you this year, 2016, and I pray and to your will be done in my life as it is in heaven, I continue extending your kingdom of God here. These are my fruits. Can we say that boldly? But since we cannot do this without God's help, God's favor, God's blessing, we, can, we have nothing to present at the end of the year. The point is that we try to do things with our own efforts, focuses only on the external fruits without deepening the relationship that we have with God so we can strengthen our roots that will help us to receive the nutrition, the resources for our spiritual life 
that we can bear the fruit that God is looking for. John will say it, the words of Jesus in his gospel, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. We can do nothing without God. This ministry is nothing without God. And my prayer the whole year was, is God, I want to see you every Sunday in every service. I want to see you touching. And, and sometimes I, w I was just focused in, in the, the, the sternness here. Okay, I don't see a move, Lord, in, 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 the, in the service. I don't see that yeah, something is flowing on the air. I don't see people like in, in other churches. And, and, and since I, I hear some comments and some, some kind of, uh, of uh, suggestions for my ministries, and they say, why don't you have this kind of story. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And they, I, I received those suggestions with humble heart. But my problem was that I was focused most on these external things and say, oh yes, maybe I should do that. Maybe I, I, we, we need to change something. And I was just keeping listening to these voices that were distracting me to deep this ministry into a level of spirituality that will never be shaken. That will never will gonna be break for any kind of winds or storms that will come for our ministry. The good news is it's not late. Because as soon as I, I was aware of that and say, okay, God, let me start again. If a tree have deep roots, doesn't matter how strong is the storm how strong is the wind the roots of the tree will help them to this tree probably will bend down a little bit probably it touch the ground but as soon the wind disappear it will gonna stand again firm back to his normal position sense to what to the fruits no sense to the root sense to the root once again it's time to evaluate are we are doing our ministry just with us among us or are we doing our ministry with God it's about God and us once again it's just two simple numbers you and God our ministry and God there's two only things to take we have two hands one to hold God's hand and the other one to, hand, to hold our ministry. The question is, is God with us? In this Christmas season, we know the gospel message that God's name is Immanuel, God with us. And it's time to go back to Evelyn and say, is God with us? Is God abandoned us? Did he left, his spirit did left, is the spirit left in this ministry? I don't think so. God is faithful. And even though the people of Israel in the desert, they, they thought, God abandoned us. We are alone here in the desert. God was always with them. And he's always with us, and he will be always with us. We don't need to focus in the external scenes like feeling something, try to feel in something, try to see something, because that's what people think, that, oh, that's spirituality. When they see miracles, when they see people speaking in tongues, when they see people just doing that. And that's why many people criticize us, the Presbyterian churches. Some other denominations say, well, in your church, we don't see people speaking in tongues. In your church, we don't see you're calling for an altar calling after the sermon. You Presbyterians are so passive in your worship. Probably the spirit is passive or dead. Some other denominations say, yes, you Presbyterian probably have a dead service. Nothing looks alive. Why? Because we are just sitting down listening to a sermon with sometimes tired, stressed faces and people who have from other, come from other experiences, they compare and say, oh, is this a real service? And 
Many people have come this year, 2016, but they don't like ourselves. So, and I try, I have to confess, I try to please them. To make them feel like, oh, this is what the ministry you are looking for, but sorry, we cannot please them. We cannot compare with other churches, we cannot compare with other denominations because God planned this ministry here, CEN here, God planned this church. And as we celebrated last year, the 70 years of this church, I was thinking, of who there will think that this church, after 70 years, we have an English ministry? Nobody have that plan when they founded this church. It was all in God's plan. So if God had a plan for CEN, Definitely, he is here. And he will take care of CEN with me or without me. So we just need to be faithful in little. And God will put us in charge of many things. If we only focus on the fruits, then we will miss the opportunity to see God in us, even though in this kind of service, even though in this kind of uh, circumstance, even though in this kind of, of church, in this kind of denomination, we will miss the presence of God. I was, when I came first to Korea, I was very critical and said, wow, is this the way that people in the Presbyterian denomination worship God? I was very surprised that in this calm kind of service, in this a passive worship style, many people receive Christ. And I was one of them. Because I didn't born again in a Pentecostal service, even though when I was in my country, I, many people invite me to go to Pentecostal service, and I see people just shaking, throwing on the floor, speaking in tones, crying, and... I was just in the middle of everything and watching everybody and just doing a, some kind of act that I, it was so weary to me. And I was Catholic. And in Catholic Church, now we have Catholic charismatic movement, but in those days when I was a young, the charismatic war was a war for only Pentecostal churches. And one of my friends invited me, and actually I went there because I was looking for a girlfriend, and that's why my main reason. And yeah, I was a young, and that, I just went there, and I see, ah, and everybody's speaking tongues, and, and falling on the floor, and this preacher was praying, and then in, immediately he started to cry, and then he, he shouted, and I said, wow, I never see that before in my life. But God didn't call me in that church or in that denomination. Years later, when I came to Korea, and I was 26 years old here in Korea, in a very calm Presbyterian church with a Korean sermon with a very bad translation, God called me. And he wants me to be a pastor. And 20 years later, I'm here preaching in a Presbyterian church in an English ministry to all of you. Who made this fruit? Me? No. It was God. It was God all the time. I'm just the branches. He's the vine. But we have to understand what is the root for this fruit. Or, I mean, what is the source of this fruit? The, verse, the next verse of John 15 says that, You did not choose me, but I choose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain that Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So it's just a question of, it is you and Jesus in this plan that God has for you. Or it's just you and you. You and your dreams. You and your plans. You and your strength. What is it that is helping to bear this fruit. Without root, a tree cannot bear fruit. And actually, Jesus was talking about those who were compared, that were listening to the word of God. And he said, they were, they were a farmer who, who spread the, the seeds. And some of them fall on the ground, on the path, and some of them fall on the storms. 
And those who fall on the thorn, on the thorns, sorry, on the thorns, they were opacated by the worries of their life. And there are others who they fall near to the rocks. And they brought up the steam of the plant. And in the middle of the day, because they didn't have deep roots, they just died. They just die. And Jesus compared those who just received the message of today, Sunday, and then on Monday go back again to the normal life. And because they don't deep a relationship with God, they don't have a fruit for the rest of the week. And we are dying spiritually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we come back again for mercy on Sunday. God doesn't want us to be Sunday Christians. He wants us to be Christians who have a relationship every day and who bear fruits every day. We have to estimate the fruit that we have spiritually and every fruit that you have in your life, financially, relationally, emotionally, as you evaluate your day every day, seeking what Thinking what you have done and with who you have done, your business, your spirituality, and your relationship. If you have good business, so you will evaluate how much money you use, how much, uh, much you invest in, how many clients you, you meet, how many people you reach out, how many people you uh, interact during the day. If you teach, your, you, you talk to your students, what do you say to them, what do you talk to them, and in our spiritual life, to whom I talk about Jesus? To whom I, I, I testify? Or just with my actions, to whom I reflect the glory of God in my life? We need Jesus in our ministry. We need Jesus at the end of this year. We need Jesus before we start a new year. Don't focus on the fruits. Habakkuk said, even though there's no fruit in the, in, the, in the farmer, there's no fruit there on the trees, I will still rejoice in the Lord. Why? Why Habakkuk didn't rejoice, or uh, he rejoiced in a tree that have no fruit? Because he rejoiced that he still have the root. And if he have the root, then he have hope for the next season of fruits. Maybe you can see our ministry, and I, I'm... I criticize myself, I blame myself and say, wow, I'm ashamed to say hello to the senior pastor. I'm ashamed to present every Sunday, pastor, we just have 20 today. Next week, pastor, we have 18 today. Pastor, next week, we have 15 today. And he doesn't want to see what will be the next number. I'm ashamed to say that to the senior pastor. And probably he feel a little disappointed about my ministry. And I can have depression. I was depressed actually in the middle of the year because of that. But after I talked to a person and, and I opened my heart and said, yes, I feel so upset, so depressing, and maybe this is no my, uh, my uh, the purpose to be here, probably. I, I was thinking, remember what I told you at the beginning of the year? This should be my Sabbath year. <laughs> Sabbath year means after six years or seven years of working, I mean, she should have a year of rest. And this is supposed to be my seventh year here in this church. and supposed to be my Sabbath year. And say, pr probably I make a mistake that I didn't take a rest and I tried to work one more year and this is the fruits. I'm overworking. For God. And that's why probably this ministry, I was criticizing myself. I was praying to God, yeah, probably God, I, I, I didn't listen to you to take a rest. And I tried to bring a more challenge to this church and bring your kingdom come. And now these are the fruits zero or negative. But God, speak to, uh, to me again and say, oh, you are higher, not for seven years or for 14 years. You are higher forever. And you make, you promise that you will be 
in my house forever. And as the psalmist says in Psalm 23, mercy and love will follow you forever. And I say, yes, Lord, I want to be in your house forever. And if that means that I have to serve 24 hours, then so be it. God have still love for you, love for us, love for this ministry, as we still focus in the root, not in the fruits. Look at what the, the prophet Isaiah said. In verse 11, 11, 10, he says, And the day, and that day, there shall be the root of Jesse. Now, the word root is not in minuscula, it's in majusculas, capital letter. This root is Jesus. The root of Jesse is Jesus. Jesse is the father of David, the King David. And Isaiah is talking to those who believe in the Messiah, the, key, the song of David, the song of God. And he said, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people for the Gentiles that sit him and his resting place shall be glorious. This is God's word for our ministry at the end of this year. Yes, it's time to evaluate. Yes, we are not many. Yes, but we still have the root with us. We still have Jesus with that. And he will stand that for us. And I will tell you, the next year thing is stand firm. Stand firm. So this word says here clearly, and we shall, who shall stand us as a banner. Jesus will be our banner. And I will put with big letters, stand fear. Your war is not in vain. First Corinthians chapter 15, 18. And God will be resting in this place glorious the next year. How many of you believe that? Romans 11, 16 and 18 says, For it is the first fruit, the holy, the lamb is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Who are the branches? We are the branches. Who is the vine? Jesus is the vine. And he's also the first fruit. And remember that you do not support the root. The root support you. Remember that. It's not the fruit. It's the root that we are talking about here. It's the way. What's the way? Jesus is the way. We just need to walk in his way. We just need to be supported by the root and let Jesus help us to bear fruit. We're going to work hard the next year. We have to make sacrifices the next year. We have to pray more. We have to go back to fast and, 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 and give to God what belongs to God and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But yes, we're going to be here serving the Lord as we have done so far. So my dear love, brothers and sisters in Christ here, God is with us. He doesn't abandon us. And even though we don't see fruits this year, we still have the root, Jesus. And he will be forever with us as we get it together in his name. No focus on the external sins, but focus on the deep relationship that we have and the word that he will speak to us every Sunday in his name. Let's pray. And God, we thank you for these words again.